let's go to the to the next talk. Uh, this one is uh, a talk from Hao Sheng Xiao from the University of Edinburgh. Uh, he's a second year PhD student and is interested in hardware security and computer architecture. And he's going to talk to us about how out of order pipelines can produce side channels beyond speculation. So please, floor is yours. Introduction. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my talk for Hack Eraser. Our gadget to drive arbitrary fine grain timing difference via processors instruction level parallelism um, to facilitate attacks on restricted environments such as JavaScript. First of all, why do side channel attackers want fine grain timers? This is because almost every side channel relies on the timing to extract critical information during the attack. Is this memory access a cache hit or miss? What about TOB hit or miss? How many cache misses occur during this page work or eviction set iteration? Is there any contention of ports, banks, or even network on chip? Uh, fine grain uh, timer feed those information to attackers so that they can either um, find eviction sets, break address space layout randomization, or complete other necessary steps which finally lead to a successful exploit. Therefore, in JavaScript environment, for example, Chrome, the timing API performance dot now was once coarsened to 100 millisecond plus a 100 millisecond jitter due to the huge threat from Spectre attack. After the implementation of site isolation, the resolution has been increased to five microseconds plus a jitter. Oh, it is still too coarse to be useful for most side channels. Additionally, shared array buffer was once completely disabled and now still partially disabled because recent side channel attacks use it to build a timer. Other commercial browsers or cloud platforms such as Tor and Cloudflare Worker even have stricter policy to prevent attackers from obtaining any fine grained timers. Unfortunately, our hack race overcomes all of those restrictions, raising the question of um, whether it is still worth sacrificing those performance and compatibility for such mitigations. The key of Hack Eraser lies in its utilization of instruction level parallelism, a pervasive characteristic for modern out of order CPUs, yet hasn't been extensively exploited in previous attacks, unlike speculative execution. To make use of instruction level parallelism, we define the concept of path as an instruction sequence that currently does not have any external data dependence and thus can be processed independently of any instructions that doesn't belong to this sequence. Uh, we're gonna give a simple example. Suppose we have a sequence of instructions labeled A through H with arrows indicating data dependence. Those instructions linked by blue arrows form one path here. Um, those instructions linked by those yellow arrows form another. Here both paths start with instruction A. Suppose the execution latency of instruction A is long enough, like say like 100 cycles. The following instruction from B to H uh, in both paths will have arrived at the back end of the pipeline and ready to execute by the time the result of A returns. So instruction A serves like a, a starting pistol for both paths. Which path finishes first will depend only on the overall execution time of their instructions. The Hack Eraser comprises two types of gadgets, the Raising Gadget and the Magnifier Gadget. The Raising Gadget first leaves a microarchitecture state based on the execution time of the target operation, which is then amplified by the Magnifier Gadget to an observable extent. For example, consider transient presence or absence gadget here. The operation of the attacker would like to time is embedded in path M, which is the path to measure. We first construct another baseline path here that can be executed within a constant time. Uh, the constant, the, that constant time is, is equal to the threshold that the attacker would like to know whether path M will be executed within this time or not. An access is attached to the end of this path with an arrow indicating data dependence. Whether A is accessed or not indicates which path finishes first. Then we wrap path M in an if branch controlled by an input X. Before the measurement, the, the branch is trained to be not taken. When the measurement begins, if path finishes before path B, 
the branch will be resolved to be taken and flushes, and flushes the pass B so that access A will not happen. Otherwise, access A will be speculatively accessed before pass M incurs the flush. This gadget still requires a training stage and relies on speculative execution, right? Uh, so it might be defended by mitigation targeting as specter. So now we introduce the non-transient reorder-based raising gadget, which overcomes the limitation of the previous gadget. If path M finishes first, A will be accessed before B. If the baseline path finishes first, then B will be accessed before A. We map A and B into the same L1 cache set and modify the pseudo ARU gadget introducing Google's Spectre proof of concept tag into a magnifier gadget that takes the access sequence as an input. Here we are, we are not gonna dig too deep into this due to the time limit. Um, if, if A is accessed first, the following access pattern, a C, E, C, D, C, B, C, E, C, D, C, B, will cause half of the memory access in the repetition um, to result in L1 cache misses, as A always occupy one slot and will not get evicted, reducing the effective cache capacity. However, if B is accessed first, A will be kicked out here, and all following cache accesses will be hit. When we repeat the access pattern in the magnifier gadget for uh, like uh, 4,000 times, we can create 0.1 millisecond timing difference, which can be easily then ob observed by the coarse grand timing API with around five microsecond resolution. The cache replacement policy may change in order to resist side channels in the future, right? And also, although many papers work on reverse engineering the replacement policy, it is still very difficult. Besides, the burst of cache misses looks abnormal and can be easily distinguished and detected. So, is there a chance that cache replacement policy can be removed? Yes, there is. By using multiple cache sets instead of just one, as in the previous gadget, we create two paths that load data from different cache sets, helping us to achieve the goal of not depending on any particular replacement policy. In this diagram, those green arrows represent parallel access after each period of path A. They access the same set but not same data as that in path B. Therefore, it will evict part of the data in path B's critical path, regardless of the specific replacement policy being used. As the cache set cannot insert one set of new data from this parallel access without evicting any of the old one. If both paths start at the same time, pass B will not be affected by pass A since um, pass B will finish accessing data in each cache set before they are evicted by pass A. However, if pass B starts later than pass A, pass A will evict data that belongs to pass B's cache set every time, causing repetitive delay. This can lead to accumulation of delays, transforming a small starting time delay in pass B into a larger one. Finally, we use parallel prefetching in path B, here showing pink arrows, to reset cache state after being destroyed by path A, so that it can theoretically enlarge to an infinite number. A cache set mapping policy may also change to resist side channel in the future, the mapping is difficult or timing or time, time consuming to reverse engineer. Cache channels is also sensitive to noise. Besides, those channel requires a well-prepared cache state to work. So it will be even better to remove cache dependency. Here we replace the cache eviction by arithmetic unit contention. In this example, we use eight byte divide unit contention. When paths A and B start at the same time, no contention occurs because pa parallel divide operations are executed when paths B are executing add operations. When paths B start later than paths A, those parallel divide operations will bring delay to paths B, and the timing difference accumulates just as previous gadgets. However, since this delay is caused by contention rather than some stable state, we need to have more precise control on when this parallel divide operation happens. For example, this delay might disappear once pass A runs too far ahead of pass B. At that time, divides from pass A executes concurrently with add operations rather than divide operations from pass A, pass B, sorry. So check out our paper if you're interested in how we did this. Spoiler alert, uh, it's reorder buffer. So the following results pertain to, to the arbitrary replacement um, policy magnifier gadget 
and the arithmetic operation only magnify gadget. The, the arbitrary replacement policy magnify gadget can magnify the timing gadget to 100 microseconds with minimal noise interference. The arithmetic operation only magnify gadget can magnify it to approximately 70 microseconds. The precise magnification limit can be influenced by factors such as background activities, CPU frequency, and interrupt frequency. Uh, we, tend, we intend to conduct future research to quantify those dependencies. And to test the granularity of the rating gadgets for various operations, we use it to measure how many operations there are in the measurement path, whose actual number is shown in the x axis. The y axis shows corresponding maximum number of operations in the baseline path. That is faster than the measurement path. Thus, let the access to A happen. The granularity, is, uh, as shown here, is around one to six CPU cycles which is within three nanoseconds for a two gigahertz processor. In summary, our hack eraser is general, stealthy, portable, and most importantly, intractable, as it can only rely on instruction level parallelism. Although we currently have no answer whether it can or cannot be fully mitigated without abandoning instruction level parallelism, this paper again reminds side channel defenders of not solely depending on fine grain timing and microarchitects of paying more attention to the security implementing implications of each future. Thank you. <laughs>